Yo guys, how's it going? AK Moto here, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I check the valve clearances on my 2021 Yamaha YZ250F. Let's get right into this. Now here for tools for this job, we really don't need much. We're gonna need an eight and a 10 millimeter socket. We're gonna need some feeler gauges and some little hex Allen wrench bits here and there to get certain access plugs and covers off. Um, but we really don't need a whole lot of tools just to check our valve clearances here. So uh, let's get started. First, we're gonna start by removing the seat and turning our gas tank around. Now here to remove our seat guys, it's really, really simple. Once you have the two rear bolts out and you've pulled up the gas tank cover, all you gotta do is lift up on the back and push backwards and your seat assembly comes off. Here we got a little bit of water, so we're gonna wipe this up real quick as I recently just got done cleaning the bike. Here I'm gonna remove our air box cover here to get access to two more little eight millimeter bolts to remove or at least loosen up our radiator shrouds. All right guys, so here on our radiator shrouds, we just have a ton of little eight millimeter bolts. So we're gonna remove these two top ones, these two middle portion ones right here, and then for our bottom one, we're just gonna loosen this one. Now for those wondering, all these eight millimeter bolts are the same length pretty much everywhere. So don't worry too much about, um, you know, putting them back in the exact same spot because most of them are the same length. Now here we have all the bolts removed for this radiator shroud except for this bottom one and this one we just have to loosen. And here you can see by leaving just this bolt loose we can actually just hang the radiator shroud right off the radiator just like this and uh, you don't need to put it on the ground or put it anywhere. It can just hang just like this completely out of our way. Now I always recommend while you're in here in areas you can't normally reach while washing your bike normally to just give everything a good wipe down. Just the stuff that you can't normally reach. Here for our fuel tank, all we have is one little eight millimeter bolt right here to remove. Here I'm gonna set a towel down that the gas tank can sit on, and now to remove our gas tank, all we gotta do is pull up. There's two little rubber clips in there that'll hold it in place. So pull it straight up. Now here our fuel lines are still connected, and uh, here just so we can avoid having to mess with those, all we gotta do is simply turn the fuel tank around. and then we can just set it right here on the subframe. Now before we start working and tearing stuff down, I highly recommend just going in here and giving everything a really good wipe down with some water and dish soap or some kind of all-purpose cleaner, uh, just so we don't have any uh, dirt falling into the engine once we do have our valve cover off here. So we're just gonna give everything in this general area a good wipe down. First, we're gonna remove our ignition coil here, and I actually like to remove some of the electronics behind it, as they're just bolted in here with eight millimeter bolts, and it frees up a little bit more space. So this big line right here is our fuel line going from our fuel tank to our throttle body. Uh, so here, just to give us a little more space, we're gonna pull this up and out of the way. And you guys can actually see where the fuel line enters into the throttle body assembly. It can pivot freely just like that. Uh, so this is gonna allow us just to move it up, give us a little bit more working room right here to remove our valve cover here. All right, last thing to remove here on the top of our engine is this little breather hose. All we gotta do is pinch this little clamp. You can use pliers if you need, but most of the time I can move it out of the way, just like that, by hand, and then just pull this little breather line straight out, and we are pretty much ready to remove our valve cover. So here for removing our valve cover, as you guys can see, we just have two little Allen head bolts to remove, and then we can simply pull it up and off. So we're not quite done removing stuff yet. Here we just have these two little access plugs on the left side of the motor to remove. Now, if I haven't mentioned it already, you don't have to drain your oil to check your valve clearances. 
um, but just know when you remove this plug, a little bit of oil might drip out, um, but if you have your proper oil level, um, really very little should come out. It should be right up to here. Um, you guys should be able to see it on camera here once I remove this plug. And here you can see a little bit of residual oil here, but none really leaking out. All right, now before we can go sticking feeler gauges between the cam and the valve buckets, we need to make sure the engine is in the right part of the stroke and times properly. There will be a small dot on the end of each cam that will line up here with the top surface of our head. And there will also be a small mark on the flywheel which will align up right here. Now here I'm gonna demonstrate real quick which way we're gonna to wanna to turn the engine over in order to get everything aligned. So here I'm gonna bump the starter. And then you guys can see, in order to align everything, we're just gonna get a 17 millimeter bolt on the end of our crank here at our flywheel nut. And we're gonna to wanna to turn the engine over from this bolt counterclockwise. So we're essentially gonna be turning it this way. So here you wanna go nice and slow. Look for the marks. There we go. And again, when you are getting all your timing marks lined up, you do wanna make sure you are, again, rotating this flywheel nut right here counterclockwise. And you guys can see right here through this top access hole. Now this is gonna be very hard for you guys to see here on camera, um, but there is a small arrow on the edge of the flywheel. And then you're just gonna to wanna to align that here with this marking right here, this little indentation in our ignition cover. Yeah, you guys probably aren't gonna see that too well on camera, so I'll have to insert a picture on screen. Now here I know you guys will be able to see on camera, if you look on the edge of the cam gear, you guys see that little dot. Don't mind this yellow and this uh, white marking here. Uh, that's actually a paint marker. I put those when I was replacing the timing chain on my last top end rebuild. Uh, disregard those. From the factory you'll have this little guy and then one on the other side and those should line up here with the ceiling surface or the top of our head or the ceiling surface of our valve cover gaskets. All right, and we are all ready to begin checking our valve clearances. Now, one thing to remember on these late model Yamaha engines, uh, the order is actually backwards from most bikes in that we have our intake valves at the front of the motor right here and the exhaust valves towards the back. On most four strokes, it'll actually be reversed. Um, but that's just something to remember. Your intake valves are the front ones here and your exhaust valves are the back. Here I'll put a picture on the screen of the clearances that I got straight out of my owner's manual. And for the exhaust, we are calling for 0.17 millimeters to 0.24 millimeters of clearance. Um, now you can go by thousandths of an inch or you can go by millimeters. I prefer to go by millimeters. Um, but most filler gauges will actually stay both. But here I'm just gonna be going by millimeters. So here we have a 0.18 millimeter filler gauge. And here you guys can see the exhaust valve cam lobe right here, and then right under it we have the bucket. So we're basically, if you can see where I'm sticking my feeler gauge into, we're checking the clearance between these two parts. And as you guys can see, the 0.18 millimeter feeler gauge slips in there nice and freely, actually pretty loose. Here I'm gonna move to the next size up, which is a 0 0.20 millimeter feeler gauge. And I'd say, uh, let's try the next one. Uh, basically what you're looking for is a little bit of grab um, and you don't want it to be too loose to where it slides in freely with very little resistance, but you don't want it to be so tight that you're having to shove the feeler gauge in there. I'd say this one's very close, but we'll go the next size up. And then here you'll notice my feeler gauges are actually bent. Uh, I just bend them by hand. You can buy feeler gauges that are actually, you know, they come pre-bent, but most of the time uh, they don't quite, you know, work as well as if you just bend them yourself. And here we have a 0.23 millimeter feeler gauge. I think I'm gonna call that spec right there. So yeah, again, we're looking for just a little bit of drag and that's what I can feel here at this 0.23 millimeter feeder gauge. So we're on the looser end of our spec, um, but we are perfectly in spec. And if anything, I prefer to be on the looser end of the spec because as our valves wear, these clearances will tighten up. You guys probably won't be able to see this side quite as well as you can the right side, but we're gonna go in here and pretty much the exact same thing as our right side. Looking good on our exhaust valves. And now we're gonna check out our two intake valves which call for 0.12 to 0.19 millimeters of clearance. So here I'm gonna start on the tighter end of the clearance at 0.13. And again, we're just going right between our cam bucket here, or sorry, our camshaft lobe and then our valve bucket right here. And then that feels pretty good, pretty loose. Not a whole lot of drag going on here. Check the other side too while we're at it. Same, pretty loose. Here I'm gonna step all the way up to 0.18 millimeter. 
and a little tighter than that. So here you guys can see the valve feel or the feeler gauge isn't quite wanting to go between the cam lobe and the bucket. Here we're gonna go with a 0.15 millimeter. Make sure we're going in straight. Definitely a little tighter than that. Going back to our 0.13 millimeter. I'd say it's just a little bit loose, so we do have a little bit of drag going on though with the 0.13, so I'm just gonna call this 0.14 since we don't actually have a 0.14 millimeter feeler gauge. Um, but that is perfectly in spec, although we don't, again, ex have the exact feeler gauge. It's between a 0.13 and a 0.15, so we're gonna call that 0.14, which is in spec. More on the tighter end of our spec, but it is in spec. All right, so we have verified our valve clearances are all within spec, and they're all well within spec, so we can begin buttoning the bike back up, which is basically just the reverse of our disassembly. Now for pretty much all the bolts we just removed and all the access plugs, these really don't need to go back in very tight at all. Don't go over torquing these. These don't need to be tightened to a million foot pounds. So here I just have my little T-handle and I'm just gonna get them nice and snug and that's it. That's all you gotta do. Really don't need a lot of torque on these. Otherwise, the next time you go to remove these, they're gonna be a pain in the butt to remove. Just want it snug but not over tightened. Here I'm gonna reinstall our valve cover with the gasket on it. You just wanna be careful not to pinch the gasket anywhere. It can be a little tight in here sometimes. And everything should pretty much just fall right into place. There we go. And here I'm just gonna run my finger all the way around this little cover here, just to make sure we didn't pinch the gasket anywhere because it can get pretty easy to pinch the gasket. So you just wanna double check. Now here we're gonna reinstall our bolts. Now I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but you can reuse pretty much all the gaskets here on this valve cover, as long as they weren't leaking. Now if it makes you feel better, you can go in and remove and replace them all if you want to, but just for a normal maintenance valve check, you really don't need to replace any of them unless, again, you were having leaking issues. You guys saw I already moved the fuel line back down. We're just gonna get our breather hose now and move that back into place right over here on this little barb coming off of our valve cover. Make sure our clamp is out of the way. Get that all the way back on, squeeze the little clamp back on. There we go. Next, I'm gonna reinstall my ignition coil assembly because I removed the whole thing here as I find it's just a lot easier to remove this as an assembly, it's only two little bolts. So we're just gonna press down on that, make sure that seats. There we go, you heard the little clicks. And then you guys can actually see the two holes right back here. If that focuses, yep, those two holes, we're just gonna bolt this right back into place. Here before we bolt it in, it'll be pretty easy just to plug it back in though. One little click, there we go. Let's kind of get everything lined up, going here with an eight millimeter socket. Before we tighten that down, we have this little rubber piece on a tab that can just fit right onto there, just like that. Yet again, these two bolts really just need to be nice and snug. There's no reason to put a lot of torque on them. Now with everything back in place, we are good to go. Now we can just simply put our gas tank back into place, put our radiator shrouds back into place, and we're done with our valve check. Now if you want to, if this is your first time doing this, you can actually start the bike right now. Um, the fuel pump still works in this configuration here, um, just to check for oil leaks or anything, but again, as long as you didn't pinch that valve cover gasket right there, you really don't have anything to worry about here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get our fuel tank back on and get everything all buttoned up. Let's not forget this little retainer guy. Little nut here, doesn't need to be too tight. Just nice and snug, good. Now here we can just simply rotate our gas tank back into place. I'm gonna push down, click in. We have our eight millimeter bolt right back here that goes into our subframe. Get that snug down. There we go. And for our radiator shrouds, because we didn't take them all the way off, it's super easy. All we gotta do is just simply rotate them back in place. Now here, one thing you do wanna look out for is when you are rotating this radiator shroud back in place, uh, this little piece of the air box here, this little vent, and this little tab on the radiator shroud do need to align up and kinda go inside of each other. 
just like that. So that's just one thing you wanna watch out for when you're rotating it back. Just make sure you have that lined up. So this little vent is uh, nice and connected to our radiator shroud. And here for our hardware guys, like I said earlier, the ones with the washers will go on the lower portion of our radiator shroud. And the ones without washers go on the top portion. And uh, they're all the same length. So as long as you get the locations right, you'll be good. All right guys, and there we go. That is how I check the valve clearances on my 2021 YZ250F. And I hope you guys have found this video helpful or at the very least somewhat entertaining. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any more video ideas or requests you wanna see, put them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.